Hello, everybody, and happy Monday, May 17th, 2021. You know what time it is. Titanic Talks time. How are y'all? How you doing? It's Monday, and it feels like one. You know what I'm saying? I uh, hope you had a good weekend. I certainly did. It was very, uh, very very chill, I guess you would say. I did some uh, studio management, uh, and it was not that exciting. (laughs) Um, And, you know, I, how is your workspace? Is it tidy? And when it's untidy, do you feel like that rubs off on your um, creativity or your your mental clarity. Um, I, I have a significant amount of gear, uh, which tends to be lead to a significant amount of cables. And I finally came to the uh, the point where I needed to find a cable management solution, uh, adult stuff. Um, but it definitely makes for a uh, it makes for I think a, a better mental clarity <clears throat> when it comes to uh, your workspace and environment. And um, it takes a lot of time, you know, building a studio out or, or building your kind of your creative workspace. Um, it's never definitive. It's always, it's kind of like a constantly evolving uh, thing. And I, I would highly recommend um, getting in, getting uh, some sort of cable management system if you have a lot of cables all over the place. In my case, mine were kind of on the floor, and I'd be editing, and I would feel them um, on my toes, and I just said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to do this thing. So I, um, I installed a, a cable management rack, and I got to say, it's kind of made me feel a lot more confident about my... Um, creative space, which has inspired me to work on more music and, um, and be, be excited about kind of the freshness involved. And I was talking to, uh, my good friend, Johnny Danger, who is moving into a new studio space. And, uh, we just, we were kind of talking about like downsizing and, and just getting rid of the things we don't need. And, um, starting fresh. And as things are kind of opening up and spring is in full effect, we're coming up quick on summer. Um, probably, you know, good time to reassess your, uh, your situation. And maybe, maybe it's just like your, your kitchen or your living room, um, your living space, isn't it always kind of a, it's kind of a trip, even like with your living room, when you swap everything around and, and move it and it kind of makes a familiar place somewhat unfamiliar, which can be kind of cool, kind of exciting because we as uh, human beings tend to get stuck in our ways and our patterns. And I am under the uh, belief system that mixing things up a little bit is uh, typically typically a good thing and then you'll know too if 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 you kind of had like a workflow or you know your your feng shui was such um that it was conducive to a healthy uh day-to-day experience you know some things if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of situation and that's kind of where i've been the past couple days is uh just re rearranging reorganizing um You know, I'm the type, if I'm like recording something on my, one of my synthesizers and there's just like a cable that always bothers me, I can see it out of the corner of my eye. I just finally got, you know, got it all situated and it feels pretty good. We've been having a good amount of clouds and rain here in Texas and, um, you know, I'm, I'm still getting used to that being very familiar with uh, sunny and 75 pretty much every day of the year down in Southern California. 
um, but it's welcome. It's kind of changed the music I listen to and the the music that I'm making. I have this here uh, water bottle now. Do you feel like you can drink more water when you're drinking out of a straw? There's something about it. I'm drinking like five of those a day now, and, and I think it's having a a positive effect being properly hydrated. Didn't realize how much water I wasn't drinking. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're made of water, and we need it. Uh, somebody, somebody asked a question... Um, and I, I responded to it in the comments and I, I said that I would um, dive deeper into it. It was from one of our channel members, Christopher Page, and he asked um, if I went to college or if I went to school uh, for, you know, for this kind of stuff that I do. Um, I did not. I, I wanted to really, really, really bad. I wanted to go to film school. Because when I was at that point in, this would have been high school, um, music was just kind of a fun thing. And I never, I was, I was very insecure and I just wasn't very confident with my, my writing or my playing. And I always felt as though there was someone who was just way better than me. And um, I think that lack of confidence pushed me towards, well, but I was really good at like cameras and editing and making videos and stuff. So I thought, oh, I should go to film school because I wanted to be a director. Um, but film school was very, very expensive. Um, but my, I wanted to go to New York City. I, I never really... I had heard like, oh, Hollywood's where you go and make it, but I just had this, growing up in Michigan, I just wanted to be in a city, like a, a densely populated, big building kind of city, and though I had never been to um, LA at that time, I had been to New York, and uh, really thought it was, was pretty cool. So I think there was like a familiarity and... I guess around that time I was pretty into like Scorsese's films. And so, yeah, I, I thought like, oh, I'd be so cool to, to go to New York, but I had some older friends and who lived there. And the more I looked into it, I just kind of realized like I could never afford this. And I, I wasn't a bad student in high school, but I, I certainly did not um, overachieve uh, at all. I was just so focused on learning how to edit videos and then, you know, school would get out. I would go to work. I worked at a movie theater and I loved it. And then, um, yeah. And like on weekends, it was just, we would, we would go play shows. I had a couple different bands that I was in and just kind of around the, uh, the Tri-Cities area, as they say, Saginaw, Bay City, Midland, and occasionally in Detroit, um, we, would, we would go play shows, or Flint, which uh, apparently still has an insane water crisis going on, but anyway, don't know how that's uh, possible. But um, so my focus wasn't wasn't really on school, but but I also a lot of my heroes had said that uh, they hadn't gone to college or, or they were college dropouts. Um, and so I, I really kind of started paying attention to. At that time, it was DVDs, right? <clears throat> and that, that's one of, that's the main thing I, I don't um like about all the streaming services is you don't have the option of a DVD, DVD commentary track. And if you're young enough um, that you don't really remember that or you, you haven't grown up with DVDs of, as being like a, a thing, um, for me in high school, being becoming obsessed with filmmaking, um, it was almost every movie you could select to have a commentary track where the directors or the producers and sometimes the talent would um, 
pr- basically do like a podcast over top of the movie and you know they would watch along and do the commentary and you would learn so much it luckily now a lot of those uh, have been uploaded to YouTube and some of them are really funny like the ones from Trey Parker and Matt Stone's um movies some of those are funnier than the movies themselves because they just get like hammered throughout and uh it's it's a lot of fun but i had like you know the the whole weird like um alternative kid thing in high school where um it wasn't like i was like a loser or anything but i always felt as though because i was so into like the TV production side of things because we were lucky enough to have a class where we had um, a bunch of IMAX, the old, um, not the clamshell, that was the iBook, but the it was like the CRT monitor with like the turquoise um, back and they were running Mac OS 9, I think, and like one of the earliest versions of Final Cut and then we had a bunch of mini DV cameras somehow. Um, and I found a way because I was really good friends with uh, the teacher who, who was, who was um, teaching that class. And he, I think, saw a, how, how much I liked it and was kind of obsessed with it. And so he made a what, what they called an independent study class where pretty much my senior year of high school I spent half the day just editing in Final Cut Pro and um, doing computer stuff and then we would do like the morning announcements we do like video announcements every single day so you know in the first period of class we would shoot second would be my independent study I would edit and then um, by the third class of the day we would air them because we found out how to like kind of like not hack but basically like hack into the local um, public access cable station that the school district had access to, which was kind of cool because then our friends who didn't go to our school or like, or our parents could tune in at the same time and see what was going on. And basically what we would do is we would just fly through the announcements that we had to say. And I think we were allotted like three minutes, three or four minutes. And, um, And we would just use that as an excuse to like play our short films and just little sketches and um, that kind of thing. And that's that's really what got me into filmmaking Um, and then learning how to I mean, when you start off doing this stuff, it just looks like trash. But I was at least thinking about lighting and um, composition and just learning things from books and older friends and. And this is pre YouTube, so uh, you had to go onto like forums and it, all that stuff if you wanted to learn cameras and editing. But I was I was lucky enough to have a, um, a teacher who noticed that I was really kind of into this stuff and um, kind of set aside like a an opportunity for me. So shout out to Mr. Church. Um, and so, you know, it kind of became that thing senior year, all all the friends are kind of going, getting ready to go to college and, uh, like 99% of them were studying communications, which I don't even know what that means. And even at that time, 17, 18 years old, just being like, that kind of seems like a weird like what what is that you know what what does that mean um and i think around that time too i was starting to get more into i i realized that i had this kind of thing in me where i wanted to like make deals and negotiate and and almost like how i did to to get out of going to regular classes you know, I, I kind of like negotiated my way in within kind of the school system to be like, hey, I this is this is something that I want to do. And it's also helpful for the school because we're doing the announcements and, um, you know, whatever. And that I was like, well, oh, I could just kind of do that like 
in life, I didn't realize that was kind of like the foundation of like starting my own business. But um, somewhere along the lines, I kind of realized like, oh, well, yeah, I'll just I'll just start my own business and I'm really good at this stuff. And yeah, that's what I'll do. Not knowing it would take me 12 years to make any money doing it. <laughs> but um I did, I did kind of test the waters. I took, I saw at a local like community college, there was a couple classes that, um, offered video kind of production, television production and broadcasting focused stuff. Um, and I took like one class. Well, there was like one class that I like went to, um, and I only went for really a couple days. Um, I realized pretty quickly they made you kind of go through all the basics and stuff and, you know, like, um, yeah, I was just, I was just like, uh, I kind of, I kind of know this stuff and it just so happened, um, right when I was deciding like, I don't think this college things for me. Um, I was offered a job at one of the biggest companies in, in town where I had my own office and my own like studio, basically. It was like a whole editing suite and they were super cool. Um, and there was just a ton of, a ton of video work. And this was at the time. And this was at a time where video was really kind of becoming uh, manageable and you could start to send files back and forth a little bit more. So for business, that really meant um, more demand for video type stuff. And there I was fresh out of high school and, you know, they were, they were really cool. And they were just kind of like, hey, we'll pay for your education if you want to continue going to school while working part-time or if you want you can work full-time and I it took me about two seconds and I was like so I can go to school for four years to get a job like this or I can just start now and get a four-year head start and so I just started right away and I always kind of thought my first week working there in a real environment you know everyone else is like in their 40s and 50s and doing these huge deals <laughs> and huge, it was all Fortune 500 companies that we were um, kind of like doing these like videos for and like these big programs, corporate programs. And just like a couple days in, I was like, oh, wow, like how could you even teach this in school? Because, you know, there's the technical element, but like the like the business element, I, I realized or I, I thought and I, I think it was a I thought correctly, like the, the human element and the interpersonal relationships, like that was the most important part, you know, like maybe you deal with like a difficult person. Um, and it's putting, a, a strain on the entire project. Um, it's, I suppose there's, there's, you know, classes maybe in like, psychology that can help you deal with that but what I was seeing was a lot of just very basic you know basic classes that were just kind of like a rehash of what I had just spent four years in high school doing and anyway so um yeah I I started I started working full-time and and that was kind of kind of crazy because I was just a dumb kid, but I was good at this video stuff. And people seemed to like me. Um, and we, we had a really cool thing going, and suddenly I was making all this money. Um, and so I you know, got my own place, bought a crazy car, and um, pretty much spent all the money I was uh, making, which was dumb. So if you're young and you're in that position, just save your money. You don't need a cool car. And... Um, yeah, I worked I worked there for a uh, couple years, I think two and a half years, and just uh, 
kept on you know, like playing music with bands around that time and really started to learn recording. And by that point, a lot of my friends, typically most of my friends have been older for a large portion of my life. And they were in the big cities and I was kind of hearing things about, you know, opportunities and this and that. And so suddenly I had opportunities in, um, in New York and San Francisco and I knew some people in California, uh, Southern California. And, but most of my friends were in Chicago because Chicago was just way closer. And, um, it was kind of like a testing the waters thing, I guess, maybe for me, um, though I wanted to go to New York, um, it was just, it still seemed a little, a little crazy, a little too big of a, a plunge. And, um, it just so happened that a good friend of mine got a crazy job at a startup in Chicago and they needed a video person who went and interviewed and pretty much was hired on the spot. And that was, I just moved right away. Um, and you know, it's like life, uh, I, I was itching just to, to be in the city and here was a, a startup and I was making even more money. Um, so here I was thinking I was some baller, um, living downtown in a loft that I didn't need. And, um, but I was glad I did it because at that time, um, you know, a lot like the people I was around were all either going to college or, and at that point it was like all like creative people, you know, film school, music production, photography, pretty much everyone I was hanging out with. And so especially once I moved to Chicago, then it became, you know, on my days off or my time off, I would just go with them to whatever school they were at, Columbia or um, the School of the Art Institute um, or, you know, just any any of the schools around there. Um, and I would just go with them to like class. No one checked. So there'd be a class on like how to how to develop 35 millimeter film. So I would just go. No one asked. And here I am thinking like, oh, my God, I'm saving like over a hundred thousand dollars like to learn this stuff and like hands-on you know and the first film set I was ever on I learned how to shoot 16 millimeter film you know and um and I kind of started to see what it was and and just was thinking like man I'm, I'm really glad I didn't um go into so much debt and understand the circumstances that you know, led me to that were pretty rare maybe, but, um, you know, it was, it was just, there was kind of a scene going on, um, this kind of home recording scene and things were like the music blogs were starting to happen and, um, kind of a right place, right time thing. And, um, and I guess around that time, that's really when I started to get into, uh, the music production element, um, and, uh, and I was really getting into kind of the psychedelic experience around that time, you know, 2021, 20, um, when I first started recording and those things go hand in hand. So I would just, you know, be on a, a mission to Mars, just like psych psychologically. Um, but I had enough like recording equipment, or, or like, uh, musical equipment. And at that time it was just like a, a laptop and a MIDI controller. But, um, one of my longtime best friends, Justin McGrath, um, AKA Polyfuse, he just happened to live in the same building as me. And, um, you know, it, it was kind of like, it was downtown. And so it, so it was a lot of like yuppies and a lot of like, you know, young hip parents with a baby stroller and the dog. Um, and then here I was, you know, this just like scarecrow looking, you know, wannabe goth kid. Um, 
who kind of, you know, didn't look like he ate food. <laughs> and um, I, I, I had seen this dude um, who was kind of in the same vein, you know, he looked like a vampire. Uh, and one day we just got on the elevator at the same time and I was just like, dude, you seem cool. Um, we should, we should hang out. <laughs> and that was the beginning of one of my long time best friends and, and, you know, just incredible friendships. We talk all the time to this day. And so I kind of, and he's older than me though. And he had, he had graduated from, um, Columbia. And so I got a lot of really good insight and, um, and we just became, you know, just buddies and um, lived on the same floor. And, and he, he was the one who lent me like a real recording interface and an original 808 drum machine and a vintage Moog Prodigy. And he was just like, here, start with this. And uh, I am forever in debt to him for doing that because I did. I became obsessed with recording. So I would go to work and edit my videos, do whatever I had to do. Get home, uh, blast off into space, and then just record. And that was, that's what led to the first like album I ever produced. Um, using all of, all of his gear for the most part, and then just like a horrible um, Epiphone, you know, $100 acoustic guitar. And um, what else was I using? I, I had this, Stratocaster that I built um, for the guitars and that I didn't even know how to play bass. I don't remember on that first whole album how I played bass on it or what what I used. For some reason, yeah, I would have to look. I I know I I played every instrument, but I don't. I must have borrowed a bass or something because I, I hadn't even really like started at that point um, getting good. Ah, oh, well, maybe it was my Squire. I had a Squire jazz bass. Somewhere along the line, I, I picked up like a cheap, like broken bass and learned how to record and all that, all that jazz. Um, but, uh, that you know, this was like MySpace days. Um, Facebook was just kind of becoming like the staple. MySpace was on its way out. YouTube and Vimeo were kind of, uh, the jury was out on which one was going to like happen because the cool one was Vimeo, but YouTube had the uh, community um, uh, and, and more people. And so I switched over from Vimeo to YouTube, started releasing on that, started to get a bunch of views. Bandcamp came out and... Um, I had been submitting the music, you know, that I was producing to all these blogs. Some of them picked it up and I got numbers. And lo and behold, I get a Guitar Center catalog in the mail one day and there's a spotlight on a producer who just happens to live. I'm like looking, there's like a shot of the studio. I'm like, I know that building. Um, and... So I just went on MySpace and found, you know, that producer and just sent him some of the stuff I was making. And I was just like, hey, we should make something. <clears throat> Being completely naive, not knowing this dude, you know, was like a huge, <laughs> huge producer. Um, but I was just, you know just naive and, and had that fire and that energy. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of just like, Oh, I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. Um, and I think the psychedelics kind of helped with that. Cause it was just like, I got to a point where it's like, Oh, well nothing matters and I'm just going to die. So I might as well try. And, um, and lo and behold, he responded and he's like, yeah, come on over. Let's, uh, let's listen to some stuff in the studio. And then, you know, a couple days later, I'm in this just like giant, you know, studio where, um, you know, it was, it was just crazy. Like one of, one of the studios, um, it was like, yeah, like five floors, every different floor was a studio, just this huge old building. Allegedly Al Capone used to own it. 
uh, during like the bootlegging days. And they would do the, uh, what did they call it? Was it the Untouchables tour? Whatever the gangster tour is in um, Chicago every day, like the bus would kind of like roll up and they would do a little thing. I never did that tour, but, or knew what they were saying about the building. I just, I was like recording in there. Um, and yeah, just pretty much out of the gate. That was like my first writing session. And I, I was writing with this huge producer um, who made all these albums that I loved. And um, it was just kind of weird, but it was also, I was so confident um, in what I was doing. Uh, blind confidence, by the way. I, I mean, I, I look, listen back to kind of some of those songs now. I'm like, oh, there was something there. And I think that's what he saw too. He's like, oh, we could, we could probably figure something out. And I was like ready to go. And we ended up doing like writing sessions and got a couple songs that we liked. Um, and I was like, Oh my, like this is happening. It's actually happening. And I was just, I couldn't believe it. And then he got super busy, but I had become friends with like the engineers, um, and kind of like all of the other people, the other bands that were kind of coming through there. And, um, cause it was a very kind of like old school studio vibe, uh, with the lounges and the pool tables and the you know pinball machines and uh, lots of drinking, way too much drinking, uh, binge dr drinking, <laughs> um, and um, just kind of started hanging out, you know, and recorded where I could here and there, and you know it was just like pretty much like a year of really diving in and. Um, you know, at that point, I, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a record deal. Like, I'm diving in. I have to go in 100%. And here I was around all these very successful people suddenly and um, was constantly being told, you know, you got to write a thousand more songs. Like, you got to, you need a thousand more hours. You need to focus only on this. So I quit my job. Um, and though that was about the same time that the startup it was you know two years into the the startup and it just didn't turn a profit so the startup went under and i was just kind of like doing jobs left and right with um you know different companies doing kind of like corporate ish video work and i just wasn't really excited about it so just kind of kind of foolish but it's weird looking back now, especially with, you know, I, I'm sure my, well, I know for a fact my family was not excited about anything I was doing. And, um, and a lot of the people I was around, you know, they were, they were just like very, very skeptical for good reason. But, you know, 10 years later, well, 12 years later, I guess, somewhere around there, um, it's almost like, man, had I not just gone completely rogue and went for it I don't think I would have learned the things um I wouldn't have learned the things that I needed to um take it to another level um but it was it was one of those things you know I kind of touched on it in, in other episodes um started to meet with uh, big attorneys and managers, which is usually kind of the first step, you know, get an attorney first. And it was all kind of, no one really got it, like what we were doing in that band. Um, and I, I was just so focused on like, well, I just need to write a hit then. Or I, I was trying, every song I was writing, I was trying to write a hit. And I just really, really focused on the songwriting element, and that was inspired uh, by the producer that that um, that I was working with, and I was just very focused on on that. That was all I was thinking about. Um, and then on the side, because I kind of had this like YouTube stuff starting to bubble up, um, I thought, well, I, I should keep doing that too. And so I would just get you know obliterated, you know, just trashed, and. Um, and make a video and put it out. And, um, I was becoming more and more, uh, increasingly frustrated with, um, it not happening fast enough. Cause you know, when you're young and motivated, you just want it all right away. 
and um, patience is a virtue and, and, and one that took me very long to, um, to learn. And now as I work with younger people, uh, or people who are younger than me and the, the roles have kind of flipped. Now I'm the producer working with the young, you know, artists who are just like, let's go, let's do it. And, you know, they tend to get mad at me when I tell them they need to write a thousand more songs. <laughs> you know, it's all right. Maybe you'll write one that's an absolute hit. And trust me, I'll be the first one begging to, to produce it. But um, until then, it's, you know, you really got to master the craft or at least find out um, find out how you what your voice is and um, I everyone's got influences I get it but you just you can't you can't just be the cure right you know you you can't just be something that already happened you have to put a new spin on it and and bring new life into it um, and that's a that's a big kind of thing I see with a lot of people where they just they're just obsessed with one thing. They just want to do that again. It's like, maybe. But throughout history, it's been the combinations of things. It's like when Kurt Cobain said with Nirvana, he wanted to know, he was curious what it would sound like if you mixed Black Sabbath with the Beatles. And it's like, oh, yeah, actually, that makes a lot of sense. And no one had really done that. Um, so I think that's a, a really nice kind of philosophy that um, I, I implemented. And at that time, you know, I was very in, uh, I mean, obviously into the Beatles, just like obsessively. Um, but I was also very into kind of that like 90s alternative thing. Um, you know, I grew up loving kind of those one hit wonders, you know, um, like Flagpole Sitta uh, by Harvey Danger. That was always, at least with like my first like real band, um, that was in there. Like there's borderline garage elements. I always loved the presidents of the United States of America. Uh, I was a huge fan of them um, growing up. Um, fastball, I liked a lot. I, those were kind of like things that I was I was pulling inspiration from. Um, and then of course I was getting more into like Elliot Smith. And um, kind of more of the, I guess, uh, some elements of like bright eyes, I think, at that time that I was really inspired by. Um, but keeping it kind of always kind of vibey and being like, well, what if we add kind of some more like either piano stuff or um, make it a little creepy there's because that's kind of how the videos I was making were. And um, that was just kind of the energy around uh, the music production. It was like, you know, make it a little creepy because I've always been really into kind of like the synth wave, you know, 80s gothic, <laughs> um, you know, the cure. I, I wanted it, it like all of those things together. And um and I just experimented with all of that and was lucky enough to, you know, do it in a studio where I learned how to record too. And, um, so, you know, you work, you, you, you just try and try and try and try and try and, um, nothing's really clicking. And then finally it's like, I remember one song in particular, which I think is the only one that really actually kind of came out. Um, the only one with a music video at least. And immediately he was just like, oh yeah, that's good. Uh, let's record it. And I'm like, it's a year and a half. I've been trying to record. And I remember he was just like, oh, well, when you have a, when you have a really good song that has the potential of being a hit, you'd be surprised at how fast <laughs> I'll, uh, be, be excited to record it. And so that one came out, you know, um, came out pretty good. And we ended up doing a lot of, uh, a lot of recordings and, uh, but it's that thing, you know, I talked about it a little bit before, but just, we couldn't get a deal and couldn't get a manager and, um, the, the attorneys we kind of met with, it just, I, I could, I could feel it was like, man, I don't, I don't think they see kind of the, um, what this is. And 
a lot of people, really kind of the main thing that I was told by all of these like hotshot, you know, industry people who were the first ones I had ever met, um, you know, they were all just kind of like, oh, it might be a little too ahead of the curve. It might be, you know, it might take some time for this kind of thing to catch on, which is hilarious because they were absolutely right. I was about 10 years off. <laughs> And I don't, I don't run around thinking like, oh, I, I was, you know, doing cool ten years before. No, I, I think there was so many different reasons for people discovering that music um, so, so late. Um, but I'm thankful for everyone who, who likes it, and I'm, I'm glad, because um, really the whole thing was about the music and, and the artwork to me at least. Um, and especially at that time, it was, I just, I just wanted people to, to hear it. Cause I thought it was just, I thought it was so good. Um, I really thought it was special. So although it's bittersweet now when people, you know, tell me how much they, they <laughs> love, those songs, which most of them were never officially, I mean, we put out what, two EPs and uh, like a single, like, well, one, L one LP. But um, yeah, it just, it, it's just, it's bittersweet, but I'm glad um, all of that time spent wasn't for nothing. But I remember clearly one, one other thing I want to kind of hit on today would, would be, um, we had a big show, like like a showcase, basically. It wasn't like a New Yorker and LA showcase where it's like real deal, but we were ramping up to do that. Um, and just practice so hard and, and put a band together and just really, really, I mean, practice all the time. Got it really sounding good. And, um, you know, played this show. It was like the biggest show to date. There's like a lot of people there. And I just put everything into it. And I know everyone really tried their best. And I remember afterwards, that same producer was there. And I, I you know, I'm all fired up and excited. And I'm like, um, so what'd you think? And he was just kind of like, it was good. Uh, it was, it was really good. It just wasn't dangerous. And kind of inside, I do. And it took a couple days, maybe a couple weeks for me to really chew on it. Um, what that meant. But f at a certain point I was like, oh yeah, there is no element of danger here. And you know, that's coming from like a rock and roll producer. I think I was doing like, um, it was kind of like peak indie, you know, but I, I knew what he meant. Um, and then, you know, you fast forward, then, then it just kind of actually from that point, um, you know, we played like a, our first like festival, it was a disaster. Um, and then everything just kind of started to fall apart and it was like, oh, well, you know, if we go to the, the big city, you know, if we go to LA, we can make this work. And it just, it was, you know, it, it, it takes, um, it takes a perfect storm. Uh, and certainly it takes two to tango. Um, and I think I just, I, I had kind of this like obsessive thirst for success and, um, you know, it took, it took a while to figure out how to, how to get it to work. Um, and I just, I, wa I wasn't, really, I think, especially after getting to LA and I, and seeing how cutthroat everybody was and how it, it was like, it was just very easy, I think, to excuse, um, excuse my own ego, but also to excuse my own, like selfishness, I guess you would say. Um, 
because every, everyone around was also, you know, had huge egos and you would just see, it's like, I almost imagine just like just plowing through with a semi truck and not caring who's in your way just to get to that mystical and imaginary destination of fame and fortune, right? Um, but you're so blinded by all the stuff that you're plowing through on the way to it that you don't really realize, um, un you know, until that, that semi runs out of gas and, you know, you got to walk the rest of the way. And that, that walk is a very humbling walk. And then you finally get to that, that destination and you realize like, Oh, there's no one here. This is quite lonely. Oh, and the, you know, where'd, where'd my navigator go? <laughs> Maybe that's not the best analogy, but that's kind of the first one that came to mind. Um, And you hear people say this all the time, but it, it, it's about the journey. It's about the process, not the result. And um, I think I think I've I've been okay at being um, aware of of that throughout. I, I've stopped myself several times, you know, you just be in some foreign country playing a, a music festival or something. That's usually when it happens. And it's just like, yeah, this is, you know, take this in. Remember this. This is going in the old memory bank. Um, and, you know, just the the whole process of, I guess, you know, this idea I had um, of how to do it, 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 it was, it's almost like what I was talking about earlier with kind of like putting a studio together. It's never done. You know, there's always going to be like, well, maybe it's time to retire this keyboard and put a different one in, try something else, try some new sounds, rearrange things. It's constantly evolving and... Um, I guess kind of like as far as a career goes, I realized it's it's not a straight line, which is what I used to think it was. You know, you start off a nobody and poor and you end up, hey, you're famous forever and you have money forever. It's like name one artist. If anything, it's a roller coaster. And it wasn't until actually, and I, I didn't see this documentary until I was pretty deep into, I had like a couple years of, of what I would consider, uh, well, let's just say I had two pretty good years um, when the Frank Sinatra documentary, when I first saw it, um, it's the two-part, I believe, HBO documentary. And uh, it's like six hours long or something like that. Growing up, I just thought, you know, Frank Sinatra, like, oh yeah, he just was the poor kid from New York and someone heard his voice and he was successful his whole life. And then, uh, and then he passed away famous, but then you see the story, his life story. And it was like tragedy after tragedy and just roller coaster, huge ups, huge downs. And kind of the more and more I, I, I met, um, people personally who had been, or who I guess you would consider well-known or famous. Kind of the same story over and over and over again. You know, it's just the, like, it's it's the ups and the downs, and, and it's just a very, it's it's confusing. And 
when you're down, you think it's over forever. And then suddenly there's a huge up and then, oh, now you're down again. And you're looking around. Why do I even do this? What am I doing with my life? Um, and then at the last second, typically it's sparked by a creative impulse from above. I, I don't know. Then it's like, okay, next, you know, next step. And it's that thing I talked about previously, you know, you're not starting over, you're starting from experience. And that's as, that's as real as it gets right there. I wasn't dangerous. And I took that the wrong way for, for a while, too. Really, that's kind of probably, I think, the one moment in my life that sparked like this idea of just being... hateable because I, 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 I interpreted that I think as like oh I just need to like lean in like turn it turn it up to 11 right be wackier say more extreme things take it to the absolute edge and it, it kind of worked it got it got a lot of attention but it was the wrong kind of attention. And I, I did it for a while and just came to that realization of like, ah, this ain't it. This is excusing my inability to write even better music and make better movies or whatever, you know. Um, and I'm I'm still I'm still in that process of of nailing it. But I gotta say, I I'm really really focusing on making music from a positive place and, and the fact that it's being um received as such uh it feels good and really to have one of the first songs you know after really getting put through the ringer to have a song that really it, it's just like a simple love song really but to have that kind of take off the way it has, um, it does does mean a lot. Because that, <laughs> that was written just at the bottom. Scorpio is the one I'm referencing. Sorry, I don't know if I said that. And I love, I love all these kind of new songs that I've been putting out. Um, But just to see that one kind of take off and do its thing on its own, I've never promoted it. Just kind of put it out there. I'm like, yeah, this one I like. <laughs> Pretty cool. Just got put on so many like playlists on Spotify. It's just like it's, it's just it's awesome. It's really, really cool. And It's just weird. The curveballs of life are just uh, sometimes you swing and it's a miss, but sometimes you swing and it's a home home run, you know, or a grand slam. But I think the point is to at least swing. Even if you struck out the past thousand times, keep swinging. I 
and I feel like kind of really that's 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 what I've been doing. It's just I'm not I'm not swinging at the world, you know, in the world series right now. I'm just at that like you know, uh local fun game with my friends a little bit more relaxed and just uh doing it for the sake doing it for the love of it and i think that's that's the main thing i hope that that will be or has been or will be communicated through the music where i got a lot of songs that didn't have the magic which is i don't know if i've ever heard any songwriter be able to really explain sometimes they just the songs just happen they're right there and you you know crazy thing is i I've, there's a couple of them that i worked on with um people and uh I would argue that some of the best the best songs ever written, some of the best songs ever written, um, on projects that I've been a part of have never been released. One in particular is I think by far the best song I ever uh, wrote for one of the projects, and. Uh, It'll probably never come out. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a way I can um, negotiate some sort of. Eh, probably not. <laughs> Again, it takes two to tango. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. I am doing another video this week of kind of a um, a how-to, or uh, I suppose like a how I do. I don't know. I I don't know what I'm doing. Honestly, I'm still learning, um, and I will will for the rest of my life. Uh, but it's it's fun for me to make these things, um, and now that I'm comfortable in front of the camera. And I see that the one I put out last week, like people really liked. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Like if, if one person out there sees it and learns something and gets inspired and they're like, oh, I, I did the thing and, and here's, uh, here's my song. It's like, that's, that's why I, I'm like excited about doing these. Um, and I, I already have a huge list of ideas for these. So I, I think I think they're going to be really, really fun and really cool. And um, God, it's just it's it's I, I know I've said it a lot, but I, it's it's nice to just be me <laughs> after after all, so many years of just trying to be cool or whatever. And oh, the mystery and this and that. It's like, OK, yeah, it's whatever. And like, I know there's people who are mad at me for, you know, um, being myself on camera on the internet but it's just like you know what like uh, you got to realize I, I did that for so long and it was just false and fake and just wannabe and you know like if you're here you made it this far into this video you're watching it like cool like thank you like uh that's why I'm doing these um it for for you and for me and i just it, it's cool to be on this journey uh together really and um you know just life life gets life gets bananas b a n a n a s and um at this point you know it's like well i i just i love i love making music of all genres i love writing songs it's my favorite thing <laughs> and I love making videos. So those things all come together. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to doing more and, and, and hopefully inspiring some sort of uh, additional creativity and, you know, kind of like, I guess, paying it forward, because that's what it's all about. 
all of us need that spark of inspiration. And I've been inspired enough times and, um, and, and seen some really cool things happen in my life because of it. So I think the least I can do is to say, Hey, look, here's some cool little tricks that, um, that might be fun for you as well. So there you have it. Um, I recommended, uh, well, there's the, if you're looking for something to watch a movie recommendation, the Frank Sinatra documentary, uh, on HBO, I'm so bad about this. I'm sorry. I should really take, I'll take, I'll start taking notes. So I know what I'm talking about in the next ones, but again, just, you, just Google it. Um, Frank Sinatra, it's a two part documentary and I think they're like three hours each. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, I've been rereading. Uh, I'm reading again. I'm being a, a good, a good Titanic. Um, rereading all of Malcolm Gladwell's books. Uh, Blink is the one that I'm reading right now. Again, uh, fantastic. And a lot of it in that will really, I think, hit close to home for for everyone. And music. I've been listening to the Doobie Brothers, and I've uh, been listening to a lot of uh, a lot of classical music. Actually, I'm, I've been practicing piano quite a bit. Um, so, if I had to recommend anything in particular, ooh, damn, that's that's tough. Actually, one. Um, I mean, it, it's cheesy and predictable, but I've been listening to Beethoven. Um, yeah, sorry. I, I know that's that's kind of a lame, predictable, um, pardon me, thing. But uh, that's I would maybe today's the day if you've never really listened to classical music, um, just just hop on and just put a playlist on of. Um, you know, sometimes it's good to just type in, you know, like relaxing, chill, classical piano and just let that ride. That'll affect your day. I, I guarantee you in, in a positive way. It's like in one of the earlier episodes I talked about putting on um, which Eno record was it? Uh, was it discrete music? I think it was either that or music for airports. Both are, you, you know, in that same kind of wheelhouse or, or realm. But um it's, uh, it'll, you know, it'll vibe you out. And, um, although some of the Beethoven stuff gets, gets a little intense, but, uh, that's part of the, part of the experience. So, um, here we are just listening to all types of music. Um, cause that's, that's what life's all about. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe and the bell notification because that is how you will know I actually put a video out. For some reason, uh, they don't <laughs> they don't recommend unless you do stuff like that. So the liking and the commenting and all that, um, apparently that helps. I'm still learning even though I've, you know, hundreds of millions of views on uh, YouTube videos. You would think I'd be better at this stuff, but... Uh, still learning and it's evolving. So, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? And of course, channel members, uh, we'll see you Friday for another video, just like this, uh, an extra hour. If you want to become a channel member, click that join button, um, rock and roll. And, um, until next time, I suppose, uh, I'm figuring out the kind of the structure. I think maybe it'll be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday type thing. But uh, yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, I'll, I'll put out my next one depending on how long it takes me to edit it. Um, I, 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 it's either going to be uh, doing a song from scratch. I think it's probably going to be that actually. Um, but we're going to get into synths and vocal, uh, vocal ideas, p pedals that I like and all that stuff. So uh, I hope you'll join us, um, us, me. <laughs> Um, but us, no, our, our members here and, um, uh, cause this is, this is a, a serious vibe. So 
yeah, well, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, love y'all, and make sure you drink your water. Okay, we'll see you.